We, <laughs> you are with uh, Frank Music, and I'm a music producer, solo or artist, songwriter, bloke from Croydon. <laughs> I, th I think red wine, it's one of those drinks that alcoholics can say um, they're not an alcoholic because it doesn't sound like a, a drink that an alcoholic would drink. Yeah. So I, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I'm winging myself quite nicely here. Um, one track away from finishing the Erasure album, which is incredible. I've just finished producing that for the past six, seven months. Um, absolute privilege to be working with Vince Clark and Andy Bell, as you can imagine. Um, finished my album. It's great. Everyone's super happy. Um, you know, all the, the record label in England are raring to go to, to sell it, and um, it's already getting the singles already getting traction in places like Singapore, and Australia, which is just like not expected. So I'm super happy about that. Unlike the first album, which was all about me, complete me, um, hence the name. This album is about just having fun and um, letting go of being too serious and um, doing it in the end. So on, on the album, there is there is, there is my red wine. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much. There is Colette Car, which is a new signing to Cherry Tree Records. And uh, there is Natalia Kills, which we were just talking about. She's performing a ballad on my album with me. It's a duet, a very beautiful duet. I hope I get to make a music video for it because it would be wicked. And then there is, of course, the infamous Far East movement, um, the, the stars of G6. and. Um, I've got them somehow practicing singing on my album and I'm performing on uh, one, of the, one of the tracks on their album as well. We got completely shit faced in London, uh, which is brilliant, and um, around the corner from here actually. It used to be called the Burlington Club, I don't know what it's called now, but um, we had a great time um, and we just like, after that night at debauchery, we were like, let's make some music. And so we did, when we went back to Los Angeles, we just jumped straight into studio. I, I'm flitting at the moment, um, so I'm... I'd like to say I'm not living anywhere specifically, but I did definitely for the past 18 months solely record my album in Los Angeles. But I did record some of my best songs on a short trip when I came back to London uh, last year. I don't like to get bogged down in the whole kind of like, how do you, um, you know, how do we get our fan base like motivated or this and that. I don't really care about all the kind of strategies and stuff. But, you know, I mean, I, I've got, you know, 30 odd thousand Twitter followers. And, you know, I just, I don't, they, I don't know how they put up with me, you know, they're, they're uh, I mean, I, I just talk so much rubbish on there all the time. So, I, I love it, I think it's terrifying and exciting, but I'd rather be given a challenge than just to be put on my, on my plate. Um, I, I mean, I'm too busy making music to, to, to down, download any, and when I download music, it's generally if I'm going to be sampling it or something, and then I never buy it, because I'm like, well, I'm using it creatively, and I'm going to be promoting that song anyway. But when I when I do buy records, they're generally records I'm very passionate about. But I mean, everything on my iTunes has been paid for. It's been made by me. It's inevitable that your album will leak before it's officially released. Date. Does that bother you that some fans won't pay for it? No, um, because I think I was there was some crazy stat that got given to me that when at some point in 2009 I was the most shared artist on, on in Europe or something like that because I was creating so much music on MySpace and just giving it away I mean I think I gave away like 54 tracks or something if you actually go on YouTube there is tons of songs that never made my record and you know this is how I set up freefrankmusic.com which is a, a website dedicated to me giving away music um, which was actually illegal for me, really, because I'm signed, so I shouldn't be giving the music away. But I had a chat with them, and I was like, look, none of this music is going to be used for anything else, so let's just open the doors up. I think it's good to, um, you know, keep the punter guessing. It's like, oh, okay, so he's got a record deal, but he's not he's not trying to win a side, he's not B-siding it. He's like, there you go, make what you will of that. And I think it's good to be one step ahead like that, you know, because then the punter's not always winning. The fan is like, they, they think they're the ones winning, but actually, no. You know, just turn it on its heel. I mean, yeah. wasn't expecting that to happen. Big love to my fans, and um, you know, hopefully you will enjoy. Do it in the AM very soon. <laughs>